Hello there and uh, welcome to the show. My name is Chris Reardon. This is United Kingdom Talk. We're out in a garden again today. Um, but, although, I mean, it's dry. I don't think it's going to rain. I hope it's not going to rain. It's warm. It's warmed up again here in the UK. It must be about 75 at the moment. But no sunshine. Another grey overcast day, which doesn't seem to bother the cat, who has just, disappe- who has just appeared, haven't you? Good morning, Katie. Good afternoon. Here she is. There we are. Up on the lap. There we are. We like cat on lap, don't we? We like cat on lap. Talking to cats, um, my nephew and his girlfriend, uh, Stacy and Gary, not in that order, Gary and Stacy, okay, they don't change the names very often, have just purchased to go in their new home a little black cat. Oh, and it is the cutest thing you've ever seen. And they've posted some pictures of their cat on on the Facebook. Now, if you want to have a look at those, you'll need to look for them. Now, my name, my Facebook name is Chris Reardon UK. So you'll have to add me first, okay? Chris Reardon UK. And then look for Gary Butler in My Friends. And then you'll see, if you you click on him, you should find the uh, pictures of their new little black cat. Tiny little thing it is. Well, I mean, not that small, but it is a small cat, jet black, and it is the cutest thing ever, except for one particular photograph where it looks really evil. You know, it's got its, its mouth open, you know, where clearly it's hissing. It's hissing at someone, or probably the people taking the pictures. So there we are, nice, a nice new member to the family. We like, cats and people make each other happy, don't they? I know I'm always forever talking about my cat. Um, there was a, a new cat I noticed near my garage the other day, and it, was, it looked quite young. I don't think it was a year old, but it was out and about, middle of the night, you know, two o'clock in the morning, walking around, and it came over to me, and I give it a little stroke. It started following me back to the house. Bless his heart. I thought, oh, a new friend for Katie. How wrong could I be? You see, because Katie, my cat, she always comes out to meet me when I get home from work. Now, I don't know where she knows when, that's the strange thing about it. How do they know? Because my, my, my times of coming home change. Right? Also, I don't go out every single night of the week. Sometimes I might be off. Right? So how does she know when I'm coming home? Do they remember what night it is, pets, do you think? Do they know, for example, oh, yeah, today he's coming in at nine o'clock at night, or today is coming up at three o'clock in the morning. Do they know that? How do they know that? If it was the same time every day, I could understand it. But it's not. It's different times. How do they know? I think, you know, people are always saying that humans have more brain than I think animals have more brains and cleverness then we really understand. They just operate in different ways. Anyway, uh, so Katie came to meet me and then saw the other cat. She was not pleased. And immediately, after her usual greeting noises to me, which consist of meow, meow, little meow, just just quiet little meows, after her original greeting to me, she stopped and crouched down, stared at the other cat and hissed. Of course, the other cat was very young, so I suppose it didn't understand what that meant. So it carried on coming towards me, and then Katie moved in position, and the other cat stopped. So it didn't come any further, which is a shame, because you could have a nice little young plaything, Katie, couldn't you? Dear me, the cat's sitting on the cat uh, on the lap today. As I say, I'm in the garden today. Uh, unfortunately, my rather nice steam chair that I've had for a number of years, it's like a wooden chair with bits of brass on the end and it kind of had a long I don't know what you call it you know where your bum sits and then there's another bit that what that was attached to it which went out so that your legs would go up as well sort of flat a little bit like I do like to bring this up occasionally a little bit like business class on British Airways where I flew twice to Australia I flew twice to Australia via that method Yes, you've got to save the money, dear. Got to save the money. Anyway, unfortunately, it's broken. The, um, I, I, I think it was well made, but the idea is that the little wooden bits kind of slot in 
to the bottom of the chair and then it, it makes like a long a long chair so you can put your feet and your legs up all right but this has broken off now it's not the first time it's broken off and last time i got my glue gun and i glued a, a, oh the glue's come off oh i might be able to repair this actually hang on a minute i might be able to repair the glue's coming off last time i got my glue gun and kind of filled i'm just pulling off these bits of old glue now um filled the holes that were in the main part of the chair with the glue gun then pushed the other bit in i don't know what's that what's that called you know whether you've got like they're almost like dowels you know dowels what you put in two bits of wood to hold them together they're almost like that large dowels anyway so i put the glue gun in all the little holes actually jump off a minute cat there we are I wonder if I can do this now. Sorry, just talk amongst yourselves a minute and I'll have a go at this. See, there's little bits, these wooden things here. And I, I did use the glue gun to put the glue in the little holes. There's bits of dried glue coming off there now. But I didn't think I'd be able to pick those off and I have been able to do so. Or maybe I'll be able to fix this. I thought, rather horrendously, there was going to have to be more expense. So hang on, those bits of glue are off now. Does that just slot in there? I don't know. Uh, if you're listening for the first time, you may notice this is not a hard-hitting political documentary type radio show. This is where we talk about normal things that happen in normal people. Oh, no, that's not going to go in, is it? Normal things that happen throughout one's life. That's what we do on this programme, and we like to share stories as well. If you ever want to share a story with me, there are two methods, two main methods to do this. First is by email. The email, I'm, I'm trying to do this chair while I'm chatting away to you. Uh, the, oh, God, it won't stay still. I could do with another person, actually. <laughs> as I've said many times before, if only I had someone else to share my sad, lonely life, it would all be so much easier. Um, Shall I just have one more go? See, what, what's happening is every time I try and push the little things into the holes, the whole thing moves round. I can't go. So I need someone else. Cat, can you hold this for me? Katie? No, she's not interested, is she? Not interested at all because it doesn't concern her comfort. <laughs> um, oh, dear. I just want to... No, we're not going to be able to do that, are we? If I... Um... How else can I do this? Oh, I see why. There's still glue in the holes. I could try getting the glue. I'm not going to do it now. I could try getting the glue out, I suppose, and uh, having another go that way. But yeah, my steamer chair has broken again. It does keep happening. The, um, the, 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 the bit that makes, makes it go long out the end so you can put your feet up keeps coming off and it's come off again. Oh, shall I just go buy a new one? I do hate spending money unnecessarily. Did I tell you that I have now been to... I, I, you, know, I, you know I told you I got those four pairs of jeans for £105 at Burton's. You know the one in Bracknell I told you about? Did I, did, I told you about that. Did I tell you I have found jeans even cheaper? I can't remember if I told you now. My friend Grant, who I work, I'm sure I did tell you, didn't I, on the last show. My friend Grant, who I worked with, in, um, in Clapham, a bar in Clapham, uh, told me that jeans at Asda are only £10, dear. Bargain. So not only did I buy a pair of jeans for £10, which I haven't got on today, however, I have got a new belt on, right, which is, I'm going to take it off, <coughs> I have a new belt on, which has kind of got studs all the way uh, across it. Very, very nice. I think it's leather. And trouble is, you know, you never know, do you? I remember years ago on holiday. Oh my God, this, I'm going back 25 years now. I was on a holiday in Spain, Benidorm. That was my, um, uh, what was, why was I in Spain? Oh, that was my honeymoon. Yep. Yes, I have been married. Don't sound so shocked. We all have to try everything once, okay? No one, can, no one can say to me, ah, oh, you might like it if you try it. How many times did your mum say that to you, eh? 
<laughs> when, when you have a plate of food put down in front of it and immediately you take a dislike to it. How many times did your mum say, you don't know unless you try it? Well, I did, okay? That's it. I did try it. Anyway, so I was in Spain and we went on this excursion. And the excursion was to, to some market in Spain. And there were all these bits of gold and all this leather. And we were already very aware of the dodgy gold that they sell at these marketplaces in, um, in Spain. Right? So we didn't go near any of that. But we did find some belts. I mean, not, not this one I've got with me today. This, this, this was from Asda. Belt from Asda, seven pounds, dear. Another, but Chris Ridden likes a bargain. You know that, Chris Ridden likes a bargain. So I bought this belt in Spain. Well, I'll tell you what, it lasted no more than two weeks and it just snapped. And on closer inspection, it wasn't leather at all. It looked, like, looked to us like pressed cardboard, like cardboard that had been compressed very highly. And it looked lovely hanging up on this rack, in the, on this market stall. Got it home, used it after a few days, the thing just snapped. And no, Ross Pat's out. It wasn't because I got too fat. I'm a little bit disappointed with Ross Pat's out. Now, he does a uh, podcast as well. Rosspatzelt.co.uk is where you can find that. Okay, Rosspatzelt, P-A-T-Z-E-L-T, dot co dot UK. And he found it extremely amusing the other day when I mentioned to you boys and girls that I now seem to be a 36 waist. Oh, he thought that was very funny, didn't he? I mean, as it says in the Bible, one should cast out the log in one's own eye before one casts a stone at another. I mean, that might not be exactly right, but it, you get the general gist of things. I mean, have you seen, have you seen a picture of Ross? God almighty. Well, I'll tell you what, if him and his girlfriend, Donna Carter, ever go on holiday, he, on his own, would probably have to book the first three rows on the plane. He's very, very wise. And he's got the audacity and the cheek to laugh at me being a size 36 waist. I, I tell you what, it's a liberty. It's a blimmin' liberty, that's what it is. Thank you very much, rosspatzelt.co.uk, for all your support. Very kind indeed. There's my bitch of fashion today. So um, maybe, maybe I should just buy another chair, or maybe I'll have another go at fixing it. I don't, I don't like to buy things unnecessarily. You know that, dear. It's not that I'm, you know, it's not that I'm tight. I just like to see value for money. And a ten-pound jeans at Asda and a seven-pound belt at Asda is value for money. I have got a pair. I, sh I haven't worn them yet. I shall let you know of the uh, impending quality. And possibly my marks out of ten for that one. Okay. Um, the cough. Listen, have you heard me cough yet? It's gone. My cough has gone. Took about, oh yeah, that hung around a while, that did, about, about 10 days, completely gone. Just a bit of float, throat clearing, <clears throat> like that, that's all. Another friend I work with, Tom, um, who drives around one of the uh, drag queens that, uh, that I work with on Sundays, I was mentioning, I said, I said, I've got this bit of a cough. He said, do you bring up a bit of phlegm? He said, yeah. I said, yeah, I've had that. He said, sore throat, bit of a headache, no runny nose. I said, that's the one. He said, I've had that. They are. There's lots of little things going round, isn't there? And praise the Lord above, we don't all get swine through like my poor niece did. Little Tracy, bless her heart. She's over it now. Lasted um, three days. I think she lasted three days and she was bad for one of those days or about one and a half of those days. I did send her flowers in the end, a lovely uh, bouquet of pink flowers. And that all, it always makes people feel better, doesn't it? Don't you think flowers? Not necessarily chocolates. Although another friend of mine, so many friends, dear. Well, I don't know friends, acquaintances, more, more, like, more like Another one of my uh, uh, friends, Jason, he's going in hospital soon for a hip operation. And he's not old, he's about... Well, I think it's only about 34. Apparently, some, I, I think some sort of uh, bone trouble he's got uh, or something like that. I think it runs in the family. But yeah, he's going in for a hip operation soon. And Jason, um, he likes 
He likes the finer foods of life. Now, when I say finer foods, I don't necessarily mean all that posh stuff <coughs> covered in strange sauces and all that. You know, I've, ne I've never been one for those. When I do this, like chicken in red wine sauce, and like, can't I just have the chicken? I do like things a little bit bland, although I do like a steak with pepper, is it peppercorn sauce on it? Oh, that's rather delicious. Do you like that? Anyway, so Jason's going on holiday and I did promise him, because he's not a fruit and veg eater, okay? I did promise him, if I come down, I said there won't be any flowers, just bars of Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate. It won't be the dark stuff, not the stuff that's good for you. Dairy milk chocolate. And that, 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 that's a big thing, isn't it? A hip operation. That's a big thing for someone to go through, I think. It's not a... I suppose I, I should feel lucky that I haven't got to go through some uh, awful operation. Like, well, it's not awful operation. I'm sure most of them work out fine, don't they? There's always in the back of your mind, oh, could something go wrong? And of course, I suppose it could, but it's unlikely to now, isn't it? They've done all the experiments over the years on people, haven't they? It's like when you start going on various different drugs to treat things and what have you. They have, most drugs now, I suppose, have been tested for years and years on different people. Now, now they know what sort of combinations and that to give you, don't they? Eh? Someone else who reckons he's had swine flu this week is James Dean from matineeshow.co.uk. James Dean, matineeshow.co.uk. He reckons he's had swine flu. I don't, think, uh, I don't think he has at all. I think it's just another cry, another sad little cry for attention, isn't it, James? Dear, dear me. You won't stop at anything, will you? You won't stop anything for a bit of a touch. Oh, I've, I've got... F He's on the phone. Oh, I've got flu. A chew, a chew. I mean, it didn't even sound like a proper sneeze to me. Sounded like he was putting it on. By the way, if you can hear that uh, child screaming outside, that's because I'm in the garden today, and that's on the other side of the fence. But we don't... It all adds... Well, I don't think it's a painful scream. It looks, sounds like it's a scream for attention. As I was saying, a little bit like James Dean on the phone the other day, complaining he's got swine flu. He reckons he had to send someone out to go and get this Tamiflu stuff and this, that and the other. Oh, please. Dear me. Anything for a bit of attention, isn't it? Not only that, he's got, he's got a cracked rib as well. I mean, he probably did it himself. I reckon he did it himself. He probably laid in the road and asked a friend to drive over his chest so that he would get a cracked rib and could get attention from people. I reckon that's what's going on there. Do you? Now, I was saying at the beginning, we like to share stories on this programme. And if you would like to do so, stories about anything at all, sometimes, you know, one of the subjects that we've been uh, talking about or anything else, please share them with us. The email address of the show, there's a postal address as well, which I'm going to give you in a second. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. The cat has now settled right in front of my feet. She's like, she's like she's protecting me. Isn't it lovely? Looks like a bit like one of those sphinx sphinxes, you know, that they have in Egypt. Sphinx. Well, I'm not going to Egypt. Oh, no, I wouldn't be able to eat a thing. All that strange food. Right, the postal address is... Were you ready with that pen and paper? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk And the postal address. Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, R-G-4-2-9-E-T. Once again, Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B R A C K N E L L, R G 429 E D. Okay? 
So my friend Jason's got that to look forward to. That the hospital was actually <clears throat> a good hour's drive from me here. But, um, you know, it, it, it makes such a difference visiting someone in hospital to the person who's already in there. Sending flowers, food of any sort, through the post, hey, it's, it's all right, but it, it, it can never make up for you actually going to the hospital. So I shall do that, and uh, well, I'm sure we'll have a marvellous time. He may not actually get to eat any of the chocolate or goodies that I bring down, because I may well eat oh, most of them in the car on the way. But at least I'm turning up there. And talking about bad eating, actually, I was a little bit naughty yesterday. Yep, I did first of all go to see my friend Jason. Uh, he works at a pub in Camden Town. And uh, I popped in there uh, on the way through to see my other friend Ron. And he did me a, a, a lovely dinner. Steak and kidney pie, baked beans and chips. That's one, one, one bad meal. Oh, I've dropped my pen. One bad meal. And then later on, I went to my friend Ron's house, who, who was in a state. He was in a state. He does worry so much. Ron is a bit of a stress freak. He's always totally and utterly stressed about everything. It's all rush, 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 rush. He's the one who's got everything tidy in his house that I keep telling you about. I will get him on the show at one point, promise you. Okay, he is a little bit stuck up. <laughs> all right. He will admit that to you. And he was very stressed out yesterday. First thing that went wrong, apparently he tried to order a camera from Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk, whatever it is. Now, <coughs> this, is, this is a company that I've ordered stuff uh, from before and never ever had a problem. Actually, at the moment, I'm waiting for two paperback books to arrive. The first being the um, kind of second book from Tom Harris. You know the other book I've been reading? The one about the ambulance man? Well, he's got a second book out. It's like a continuation of the first one. So I've ordered that. That may actually come today or tomorrow, I think. And another short stories book, 50 short stories. So a couple of books coming from Amazon, and I'm sure they'll arrive. And I've ordered various stuff from there before. And it's, it's, it's always arrived before. Um, incidentally, I chose the free post option which means it gets delivered in two to three days. Uh, they did do a next day delivery, but that was three pounds. Why spend the money when you don't need to? Besides, I'm not ready to read them yet. I haven't finished the other one yet, although I'm, I'm three quarters of the way, uh, over three quarters of the way through that other book about the ambulance men now. So I'm nearly finished. Excuse me, I've nearly finished that one. Anyway, so a couple of nights ago, he decided to order a camera because he's going on holiday with his other half to Sri Lanka, which has its own problems involved in it, in that, in that you've got to have all these injections. And uh, the first thing he said to me yesterday when I turned up was, um, well, he wasn't at home actually, was, his other half was in, so I got, there, uh, got to his house about half past four, and he rolled up about seven o'clock. So we, was, we were sitting there watching the telly and that, and I had a little sleep in the, uh, in the, on the settee, because we usually have a couple of hours in the afternoon. And uh, he rolled in, and he looked as miserable as sin. He re I said, what's wrong? He said, oh, he said, I've had a horrendous day, something to do with where he was working and, and this, that, and the other. And he'd apparently tried to order this camera and it had taken the money from Amazon. And I can't remember what happened there, but he then had reason to ring them up. And Yes, the money had gone, but they hadn't received the order. So I'm not quite sure how all that works. And then I think the money was taken again, or he tried five times to order this book. And it just wasn't, ha or, or this camera rather, it just wasn't happening. He wants a new camera because the one he's got, he's got a lovely little Sony camera, but it's only got a three times zoom on it. Now, here's a little bit of advice for you here. I've often found, I'm just holding, I'm, do you know, I'm holding a cat's paw like you would hold someone's hand. And she, she loves it, don't you? She's purring away, yeah, I'm holding a cat's paw. <laughs> Someone put on, on the, uh, you know, this program is also available on YouTube as well. You can watch as well as listen. If you want to watch the latest show, just go to Chris Reardon 
dot tv okay www sorry that's wrong go to www.unitedkingdomtalk.tv easy one to remember unitedkingdomtalk.tv and uh, there you can watch the show as well as listen to it all right quite high quality as well if you don't mind me saying so we've spent the money to do that um so he's tried to order this camera and the reason is um the little Sony camera that he's got, it's great pictures, but it's only got a three times zoom on it. And I made this mistake as well years ago. You think to yourself, oh, you, you won't need that good a zoom. Well, three times isn't really good enough. Now, there's an awful lot of very well-priced cameras that have only three times zoom. I mean, they're, they're usually below £100, probably below, you, you can probably pick them up for about 50 quid, $100. Okay, but I found after a few trips out on that that the three time zoom is nowhere near enough. You want something with a 10, 12, 15 times zoom, and also you want that as an optical zoom. Don't be misled by digital zoom, digital zoom is not as good as optical zoom. You want the big numbers with the optical zoom. So if you found, I don't know, whatever make camera, and it said 15 times optical, four times digital, that would be okay. That would be quite a good camera because you can zoom right in there. And let me give you an example of this. If you were somewhere maybe uh, on a, 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 a boat trip in Australia where they're showing you the crocodiles, well, obviously, you cannot walk right up to the crocodiles. So, Hello, can you smile for the camera? You know, because probably you will be eaten. I mean, if they tried to eat Ross Pats out or James Dean, I should think that would be enough for the crocodile for the rest of the year, to be honest. <laughs> but you want to get close with that thing. And a 12 or 15 times zoom will do it for you. But it's got to be the optical. With the optical zoom, it, it, it does zoom in. The digital zoom does something electronically. <clears throat> and it doesn't quite work as well. You start getting little squares on the picture and that. You want the big numbers on the optical zoom, okay? So look for something that's 10 times or above optical zoom and whatever the digital is. And you also something that's, want something that's, say, about, about 8 to 10 megapixels. Anything above that is fine. The optical zoom on a camera is the most important part of it I think. It's more important for you to get something that's a high optical zoom than high megapixels. Okay? The zoom, the optical zoom, the lens is the most important part of that camera. Alright, so don't so you know when you're going out, if you're going on holiday this year, I know it's quite late in the year now, but if you're going on holiday this year and you want to buy a new camera, uh, get something that's over 10 times optical zoom. Okay? So, he rung me up the other day and said, um, oh, I want to buy a new camera, can you help me? I said, yeah, of course I can. I said, what have you got at the moment? So he told me what he had, and I looked that up so I knew what he had, and it had to be better than that. So I came across, I think it was a, a Canon camera with a 12 times optical zoom and something like 10.1 megapixels or something like that, roughly like that. So I showed him, and he said, yeah, that one I do. And he also said, oh, it's got to fit, fit in my pocket. Now, my camera will not fit in my pocket. But I'm okay, I don't have a problem with that. He wanted one that would just, you know, slot into his top pocket. So I found one on Amazon.com, and that was that. And he, he's tried to order it, and something's gone wrong with the ordering. So as I say, they've taken the money, but they don't seem to have received the order. And he was, in, he was, he was doing his nut over this. He was doing his nut. He said, well, what do I do? Do I cancel the order? Do I wait till tomorrow and see if they can find it? Apparently, he rung them up. And uh, he said he was kept waiting on the phone for 12 minutes, which may not sound a long time, but is actually. You know, if you're waiting on the phone and oh, it'll be with you in a minute, 12 minutes is a blooming long time to be left hanging on the phone. And in the end, I think he hung up on them. Well, I mean, I know that doesn't sort the problem, but he, he, was in, he, was, he was annoyed about this. And then it came to getting something for dinner. And I said, I'd buy dinner today, so we're going to order a pizza. But 
The trouble with him is, you know, when he wants to go out for dinner or, or wants something bought in or something like that, he can't blooming well decide what he wants. Now, if you said to me, what do you want for dinner? Oh, I don't know, sausage and chips, please, or I'll have a lasagna or a chilli con carne, maybe, or, you know, a, a, a cheese and tomato pizza, perhaps with pineapple and peppers on it. I'll come out, not him. The whole internet has to come on, he's got to look on the computer, see all the menus, oh, for Christ's sake. It's a nightmare, and he can't decide what he wants for eat. He can't decide. Da -da -da -da, all over the, and you know, half an hour later, I think it was, they decided what they wanted. So, he made, we made the mistake, and this is partly my fault as well. We made the mistake of ordering from the same pizza place that we had problems with last time. Do you remember? And I'll tell you where this is. This, this would have been the Domino's pizza in Hackney. Last time he ordered, uh, which is in London, it's nowhere near me, it's, this is in London. Last time he ordered from there, the bloke, uh, 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 the, the bloke couldn't find the address. The bloke could not find the address to deliver the pizza to. And in the end, he rung the phone number, you know, of, of the pizza. He said, where's my pizza? And just a minute. And I think he spoke, he actually spoke to the bloke who was on the bike. I'm sure he did. And the bloke says, I'm at, outside number 66. He said, well, you don't want to be outside 66. I'm at, and he gave him his door number. And the bloke says, yeah, but I'm outside 66. And that's all he kept saying. He couldn't even speak English. All the, I mean, I know, I know. And he's probably a foreign bloke trying to do his job and just couldn't get his head around it. He just couldn't speak English properly. And I feel sorry for the bloke on the bike, to be honest. You know, if, if, if you are providing some sort of service and you don't get it right for Ronnie, I mean, your ears will be burning. They really will. And in the end, we cancelled the pizzas because he couldn't find the place. And Ron picked up the phone and gave him a mouthful uh, at the shop as well. Well, we made the mistake of ordering from the same place, but this time we decided to pick the pizza up from the shop, right? So he's on the phone. He's given his other half's phone number because you have to give a phone number when you order a pizza so that they wouldn't remember us from last time when we cancelled it when they couldn't find the address. <laughs> <clears throat> they said 15 minutes, okay, fair enough, and off he went. So we got in the car, uh, and we started driving to the pizza place. First of all, he couldn't find it. Well, I couldn't remember where this place was. I said the pizza would be there in about 15 minutes, would be ready in 15 minutes. We must have been driving for 25 minutes before eventually we found this place, which is in Hackney. And... Uh, and we're driving around to a bit of a rough area, I tell you, Hackney. Oh, my God. I don't think I'd want to live there. And it's busy and there's no trees. It's all like concrete and buildings and pavements. I do like a bit of greenery, don't you? We do like a bit of greenery. Eventually, we found this place. So he's gone in there. I said, oh, well, come, to order, uh, come to collect some pizzas, please. I said, oh, yeah, OK. What's the name, please? Andy's, because that's his, his other half. Andy. OK. So he's going to... Oh. Anyone order some, uh, got anyone doing pizzas for Andy? Uh, and this other bloke came over, said, what phone number did you give? And Ron said, what do you mean what phone number did I give? What, what, what phone number did you give for it? And we, he couldn't remember his other half's phone number. He said, oh, um, oh, I can't remember, I haven't got my phone with me now. I said, it should be under the name Andy. Ah, well, we tried to ring the phone number back to confirm the order, but we couldn't get, but, but someone else answered, and we couldn't get through. Well, with this, Ron's just lost it completely. He's lost it completely. He's shouting and screaming at this poor bloke in Domino's, who, you know, fair enough, you know, they, 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 they'd done it again. That's twice they got it wrong. Twice they got it wrong, and he was saying, this is the worst Domino's I've ever come across. And the bloke behind, um, the, behind the counter, he said, don't you call my shop rubbish. He said, he said, I didn't call your shop rubbish, or words to that effect. He said, I said this was the worst place for ordering pizzas ever. That's twice you've got it wrong now. Twice. So in, in the end, uh, we walked out of there, and we went to Pizza Hut, which was also in um, Hackney. And honestly... 
the service couldn't have been more different. It really couldn't. I walked in there. I said, uh, right, what do you want then? I'll order mine. He said, oh, I need to look for the menu first. I thought, oh, here we go again. Oh, God. Don't you know what you want when you're going in for a pizza, dear? You must know what you want. Every time we have to go through all the menus and see everything that's on the list, and then he ends up ordering the same thing anyway. I bet there's a few blokes watching or listening to this show at the moment who have exactly the same problem with their female partners, don't you, eh? You go somewhere and they have to look through the entire menu and turn it over and read through the, um, uh, 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 the, the uh, afters on the back and the starters and the price of all the drinks and what soft drinks are, and even the address and phone number on the bottom of the menus. Why do we have to go through all that every time? So I ordered mine. I said, yeah, I'll have a cheese and tomato with extra cheese, please, and uh, pineapples and peppers on. Yes, sir. Uh, do you want a drink? No, thank you. Right, well, we've got, we got tea at home, so that's it. No, thank you for that. What, what do you want, sir? Oh, I'm just having a look for the menu. Oh, God. And then, so he ordered what he wanted. And then he had to order for his other half, and of course he couldn't remember what he wanted. And we didn't have our mobile phones with me. So that was another stressful moment for him because he couldn't remember what the other half wanted. That was, that was terribly stressful. I don't know. Two girls came in, and while I'm standing, he then said, oh, do you want to say these two girls while I try and remember what he wanted? And, and the bloke says, no, that's okay. Uh, I'm dealing with you first. I'll, I'll wait for you first. What a nice man, really nice bloke in this pizza hut in, um, in, uh, in, in Hackney. Anyway, eventually he did remember, and that was that. So he said, I'll be about 10 minutes. OK, thanks very much. And uh, we went outside and uh, kind of just sat, sat on this, um, you know, the phone, not, not the phone box. You know the boxes, in the, the green boxes in the streets where they have all the wires on that in? They're actually called cabinets, the green cabinets in the streets. So we sat on one of those just, you know, watching the cars go by. I didn't feel safe there at all. I thought, any moment now, someone's going to take out a Tommy gun and shoot me. <laughs> but it doesn't happen to normal people, does it? It only happens to drug dealers and that sort of thing, I think. Um, so we're sitting there for 10 minutes, and uh, then we collected the pizzas and went home, and we had them, and, and they were very nice too, really. So I did eat rather badly yesterday. Not much fruit and veggies. The only fruit that I had yesterday was... Um, a few strawberries, a few, few blueberries on my breakfast in the morning, and an apple. So not very good eating yesterday. So I'll have to double up on the fruit and veg today, I think. So that's my bit of bad eating there. But, you know, I, I don't understand that. Why do, people must know what pizza they want when they go in, rather than have to look through all the blooming menus all the time. Everything takes that, and it's just, it's just so stressed out all the time. Stress, stress, stress all the time. I don't know. Right, let's move on to some emails. First of all, from someone brand new here who writes... Oh, hang on a minute. I must have read that one out, surely. Um, have I read this out? This has got April written above it. 30th of July... Oh, no, I see. Someone's gone back and watched one of the older shows. OK, uh, this was sent a couple of weeks ago uh, from Damien in Poland. And it says, hi, Chris, I'm Damien from Poland. Yes, welcome along, Damien. I've been watching your shows, uh, your programmes now for about two or three months. It's great, funny and clever as well. I need to say I have found you here because I wanted to improve my spoken English. And I think that watching you is very helpful for me to learn. Uh, uh, to learn English, sorry. But not only this, I found you here, and I must say, you are a great person I ever met. <laughs> and that's from Damien. Oh, thank you, Damien. That's a nice, nice thing to say. What do you mean, a great person? <coughs> I'm not great at all. I'm just a little old me sitting here. Oh, do you mind? The cat just attacked my foot. Why did you do that? 
Was it because I disturbed you? Oh, the towel's wagging now. She's, she's about to move in for an attack. Katie! She's giving me dirty... Why are you giving me dirty looks? Why did you attack my feet, darling, eh? Do you want to come back on the lap? You're welcome up here if you want. No, don't walk all over there, darling. Thank you for that, um, yes, Damien. I don't consider myself a great person at all. No, not, not me, not me. I could never be as great and as marvellous as Shirley Bassey. The minute you walk in the joint, da da I can... Oh, I don't know the words, don't know the words. Oh, I've learnt two new karaoke songs. One which you heard me sing a few weeks ago, I Will Survive. And also now, Modern Romance, Best Years of Our Lives. I like that one. All the maracas and the tambourines come out there. Yes, we love it. We love it. Talking to karaoke, I must say, it got rather rowdy at Belushi's last, last Monday. It was a really good night, but I, al I almost lost control at the end. <laughs> I love it. I love it there. But rather rowdy. We love it. Towards the end. Do you like a bit rowdy? You know, not, we're not talking fighting and that, just rowdy. Loved it. A um, few messages coming in from, uh, from Doug in the USA, who says, And to think, I almost passed up on your show way back when, because I was thinking that United Kingdom talk would be a political show. Boy, was I wrong. Yes, you certainly were. Oh, I forget what page it was on, but a few weeks ago, was looking for podcasts, and some page had you at number five in the podcast charts. Now, that's cool. Oh, I wonder where that is. Number five? It's not good enough, dear. We don't worry about numbers. What was that, though? I'd like to see that. I want to know what that is. Let me know, Dougie boy. Hello to Tom. Tom does uh, his own podcast. Tom Harris, USA.com is where you can find that one. A little bit similar to this one. Talks about his life, what he's been up to, this sort of thing. Once again, Tom Harris, USA.com. And Tom writes, hiya, Chris. Lots of little comments for you this time. I like the look of the new studio, which, of course, we're not in today. We're in the garden today. And I don't think it sounds too echoey in there at all. Yeah, I was a bit concerned uh, because it's a bit bigger. Well, it's actually twice the size of uh, the, the Mirable Studios, which, incidentally, is still, is still there, OK? That the Mirable Studios is still there. We've just moved the video side of things into the other room. And, of course, uh, because this show is a radio programme as well, we have to do the radio stuff in there as well through my, through my brand-new little, little lapel microphone sitting neatly on my shirt. Eh? Um... Tom says, of course, it's really up to you whether you switch over because it has to be convenient for you. It, it actually doesn't matter which studio I do the show in. I just thought it would be nice to have things behind me for those that watch the show, you know, little things behind me. And in the larger studio, of course, I can now do that. Although the strange thing is I've had a couple of emails since saying that now it looks rather cluttered. But, um, I mean... My house is actually like that. My house is full of clutter. It is. You go around some, pe some people's houses and there's nothing in it. All they've got is a large television in the corner and perhaps a sofa and a table. And that's all they've got in the house, in the, in the living room. But I don't like it. It doesn't feel homely. It feels very clinical to me like that. They have the wooden floors. I don't like wooden floors. I like a nice thick carpet. Not keen on wooden floors. And they're noisy, aren't they? Don't you find wooden floors noisy? Huh? You drop something, it's going to break. Drop it on a carpet, you've got a little bit of a chance, haven't you? Tom says, on the subject of do, you, do we become our parents, which we brought up a while ago. Tom says, well, it's definitely true for me, especially as I've gotten older. I've become very... Very like my father. We're not exactly identical, of course, but we have similar builds, voices, mannerisms, etc. Upon meeting my father, people who know me usually immediately know that we're closely related, even before being introduced. I'm not too bothered by it myself. The fact that our hair is now the same colour bothers me more. What, you mean grey? 
<laughs> I've actually had a haircut. I don't know. Um, I, I didn't tell you, did I? I've just had another haircut. Number one all over. I'm looking quite hard today, so don't muck with me. Okay? Looking hard, yeah. Or perhaps not. <laughs> On the subject of Harry Potter, Tom says, I've seen it now and really enjoyed it. It is a long movie, but I've no complaints about the length of the film because it flowed very smoothly and staying interest. Oh, it's a strange insect landed on me then. That, that frightened me. You're supposed to be protecting me, cat. Hello? Why aren't you protecting me from these insects? Eh? Come on, girl. Give me my bit of paper back. That's it. Need that bit of paper there. Um, where were we? I have no complaints about the length of the film because it flowed very smoothly and stayed interesting throughout. Unlike Transformers 2, which I thought was far too long for its rather thin storyline, although the robots were very cool. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, both of those films were quite long. I, didn't, I actually didn't think either of them were over long for me. But Ron, who I went with, did think the Harry Potter film was very long and drawn out. I, I, I thought it was great. I, I loved it. Um, I'm just trying to think of any films I haven't enjoyed at the... At the yes, there was one. It was either last year or the year before, I think. Oh, um, and it was... D Will you get off my recording stuff? Oh, wait, don't bite me. She just bit me then. <laughs> Why did you bite me? Huh? <laughs> just bit me. <laughs> she was obviously comfortable sitting there. Naughty girl. Um, I'm just trying to think of the film that I really didn't enjoy last year. If I took how it was filmed, it was like all filmed on what looked to be like a video camera and it was all very shaky and all that. And it was about this monster in New York, which I think you, you caught, so I kind of caught a glimpse of right at the end, but you never really actually saw it. I hated that film. I really hated it. I nearly walked out of the cinema. I was so bored with it. Can you actually get a refund, right? Maybe, I don't know if anyone knows this. Can you actually get a refund if you walk out a film halfway through and say you weren't enjoying it? Is that possible? Does anyone know that? There's something for you to think about. Or has anyone actually done that? I know if you go to a restaurant and you don't enjoy the food, you can offer, or, or you say, no, it's not worth the money, I'm going to pay this. I know that, I, I'm pretty sure you can do that. But can you walk out of a film, say, after 20 minutes and say, no, I really didn't enjoy this. I'd like a refund or, or perhaps a ticket for another film. Anyone know the answer to that? Let me know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Tom says, logistics. Now, I've never understood what the word logistics means. You often see it on lorries, large lorries and that, driving around the UK. And logistics, Tom says, is the science of moving people, goods or information from point A to point B, especially in the context of supplying support or raw materials to a mobile group, such as the military outposts, and construction projects. For example, I'm currently working out the logistics of my trip to the UK and how I will be getting from Carlisle to Islay and then back to London at the end of my trip. Was that too confusing? Yes, it was. I am a confused person. Now, I understand what that is. Don't like that word, logistics. Why don't I like that word? Are there words that you don't like? What are they? Let me know, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. On the subject of his co-worker calling in sick, right? He says, I hate this too. One of my former co-workers would call in sick for the stupidest of reasons and would sometimes stay out for a week at a time for very minor illnesses. I'm not known for going to work if I'm really sick, but she took it to an unreasonable extreme and never got in any real trouble for it until the last time when she did it, when she got a very stern warning because she was out for two entire weeks 
with no good explanation, and it was affecting the entire company's operations. She has since been let go for reasons unrelated, but I can't help but think that her absenteeism made it easier for them to make that decision. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we all know people like this. I mean, I know a lot of people, the slightest hint of a cough or a sneeze, and they're off work for a couple of days. And it's, it annoys me because I don't do that. On the other hand, I am afraid one of those people who used, not so much now, but who used to drag themselves into work, even when sneezing and coughing and really quite ill. And sometimes I don't know how I got through some of the days when I was as ill as that. I mean, over the, we're talking over the last 20 years, wherever I've worked, I've tended to go into work even when I'm really ill. And, and you kind of think, and, and, but you know, now, now I'm a bit older, you realise that you get no thanks for this whatsoever. No, oh, thanks for coming into work, I really appreciate it. Nothing. You get nothing like that at all. Also, I was listening to my friend uh, Tommy Boyd, who does a, a radio show here in the UK. And he was saying, it's when you're ill, you know, why do you want people to thank you for coming in, sneezing over everyone, and then possibly they're off for a few days because you went to work? And I completely understand that. He's got a really good point there. Because if you're ill, you're going to spread it around, aren't you? People aren't going to thank you for that. And there you are expecting to be thanked. I think I, I might have had that all wrong over the years. On the subject of the... Uh, you remember recently I went to... Uh, I had to go to London for the day. And I decided to go in by train, which was marvellous, marvellous journey. But I got the wrong ticket the first time. And he says, I can do better than yours, Chris, than your wrong ticket buying. In the summer of 1999, I travelled with a friend to Scotland taking the ferry across the North Sea from Gothenburg, Sweden, to Newcastle upon Tyne. My friend's wife made all the arrangements for us, since she speaks Swedish and we don't. The boat ride to the UK was very exciting and a story for another time. But to make a long story short, that's something I'm not known for doing, uh, Tom, I must say. We like to draw them out. <laughs> to make a long story short, we arrived in the UK and had a very nice trip to Scotland and prepared to head back on the ferry on a Monday afternoon. The problem was that my friend, who was holding onto our tickets, had actually misread the tickets for our return trip and we arrived in Newcastle 12 hours after the boat had actually departed. Needless to say, this created a big problem for us, but we were eventually able to change our tickets to leave on the next ferry, which was on Thursday. <laughs> Four days later. Oh, my word. The biggest problem was that my friend and his wife were supposed to go somewhere else on business, and they had to change those plans as well. We did enjoy York, but you can bet that we were at the Newcastle port on time on that Thursday. I wasn't put out by all this personally, as I was on holiday, and I had no strict schedule to keep, but my friend was in hot water with his wife for a long time, I can tell you. Yeah, I mean, oh dear. <clears throat> that, that's awful. Buying the wrong ticket. I mean, there must be people, I suppose. I mean, I do know of people who have been on, on trains and, and ended up at the wrong place, not usually for the wrong ticket, but they've fallen asleep on the train, and they've gone through their station and got somewhere miles... Miles, miles. Oh, I did that in Australia, actually. No, I didn't fall asleep. Um, I don't think I was paying attention. And I went too far on, on this train. I went miles out of the way. I just kept going and going and going. I was supposed to meet my uncle. And then eventually I rang him and I said, how far down is this station? He said, where are you now? So I told him, he said, oh, you've gone too far. So, which was a simple case of just getting off at the next stop and coming back again. But uh, it made me about an hour late, but he wasn't too worried, my uncle in, uh, in Australia. He says, anyway, take care. Um, I'm coming over on 
August 17th. I think it's coming to my um, karaoke night. As you may have heard on my show, I think we should drive to Ross Patzelt's house in Norwich and force DonnaCarter.com to make us lasagna while I'm there. And that's from Tom. Now, I've, I'm, you know, I've spoken to Ross Patzelt on the phone a couple of times, and I am of the general opinion, I'm afraid, that he doesn't want to meet me. I don't know why that is. And actually, I, I don't always go out of my way uh, to meet people as well. I think sometimes, oh, I don't know, sometimes the, the mystery is all part of it, isn't it? But I don't know. I mean, Suko met me a while ago. Suko, are you pleased you met me or disappointed? Go on, be brutally honest, Suko. Be brutally honest. Were you disappointed, lovey? Huh? <laughs> I've got an email here from uh, Mark S. Hello, Mark. We won't get all the way through this now, I'm afraid, because we're running out a bit of a time. I'll do a little bit of it. Hello, Chris. Uh, this is from Mark from Autumn Lake. He makes calendars and all beautiful things. He says, I know exactly how you feel about getting lost on a trip. Yeah, I was talking about getting lost on a trip the other week. It can be a real worry. I hate it. The real fear is, oh, my God, I don't know where I am or where I'm going. What do I do? Of course, you're not really as bad off as it feels, but it can only make one feel very helpless. And that's how I get, Mark. I get lost very easily. And when I'm lost, I, I really panic. I, you know, like I'm never going to be able to find my way home again. I think that's one of the reasons I don't travel so much now. I've been to great places, Australia, Barbados and all that, but I, I don't, you know, I, I, I get, I, I worry so much that I'm never going to find my way home again. Isn't it strange? Maybe that's a, an animal thing. I don't know. Anyway, I'll continue your uh, email in the next show, Mark, because Mark, I'm out of time now. As always, thanks for listening and watching the show. Do join in by email. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. Dot UK. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. From myself and my little cat Katie, see you on the next one. Bye bye.